Greetings and salutations, this is Imperator Vespasian bringing you Frostgrave Knolls. Uh, it's a new unboxing video from the Frostgrave range. Uh, it's brought to you by Northstar Miniatures and um, I quite like uh, not Northstar, Northstar Military Figures. Sorry, wrong one, I just read it there. Um, Northstar do loads of really great stuff. So all stuff in the fantasy setting, you can use it for practically anything. So when these figures first came out, I really liked them. Um, I had got a picture of them on my computer and I went, they look really good, I'm gonna buy some, and I never got around to doing it. And we've been here four years and we've just got around to getting them. The main reason I didn't pick any up was because I couldn't figure out what to do with them. Um, at the time we were doing a lot of historical stuff, bolt action, and then we were doing 40K. We did want to go into doing um, W Hammer, um, from the same people who brought you 40k but um, well we're not going to do that now so we're going to do something else so we decided to do Japanese instead so I didn't have anything to fit the nulls into as a sort of force to play within a game so I didn't expend time and effort into getting any uh, although I wish I had done early because these look like really nice figures uh, but again I couldn't really use them for anything but now I am moving into, uh, or we are moving into doing Japanese. Um, we're going to, uh, the Nulls kind of fit into that sort of mythos. So I thought Nulls would be quite useful to have in a game. Um, I'm not sure what rules we're using. Uh, we're going to use uh, W Hammer to start with. Um, we may move into a different rule system. Uh, we may move into Warlords of Eichwan. Um I've been looking it up. No, not really that enamored with the rule system at the moment but i might get into it we're going to try out a few different rules to play with so but anyway that's nothing to do with this unboxing so i'll just get straight into the unboxing so these are the figures uh as per usual all the sprues are exactly the same and whoopee they have the exact bases that i'm using so i don't need to get any more bases these are actually the bases you get with it so these are the Nolls. They're big guys as well. They're quite big. Um, I've got a goblin here to point it up against. And they're a little bit taller than a goblin. So, yeah. Right. So let's have a look at them, shall we? I do hope it's in focus for you guys at home. Let's start with the heads, because that's the best thing about Nolls, isn't it? Um, they're the Noll heads. We have quite a few different faces. We've got a very good guy with a cowl on his head and some sort of other stuff like that. We've got two cowls, a guy with an eye patch and ooh, lots of sharp gnashing teeth. Of course, gnolls don't live very long. Apparently gnolls live until they're about 30. And that seems to be the age limit for gnolls. Uh, so having an old gnoll would probably be a gnoll who was about two years old. Um, so m most Nulls would probably be in about that age range. Getting to 30 would probably be quite hard in Nullish society. Then again, I am taking that from AD&D, &D, so take it as you, take, take it as read. The type of creatures of uh, Japanese mythology, um, a lot tend to be either immortal or have a very short lifespans, as far as we can tell. Um, but who cares? Right, bodies next, I think. They're the bodies. They're quite decent. We have, right, they all seem to be wearing more or less um, clothing. Oh, obviously. Um, they all seem to be wearing sort of the normal sort of clothing you would get with chainmail underneath. So they're wearing, they're not even wearing halberds or anything like that. They just seem to be wearing sort of normal clothes, not much in the way of armor, other than he's got clearly got a chainmail jerking underneath his jacket. Yeah, from that. I think it's all chain mail. I do like the separate bodies. You've got one body there and one body there. I like when they do that because that means you can pose the figure much better. So you can have him sort of bending over and stuff, firing his bow. Um, you can get some better stuff out of it. Um, one thing I noticed with, uh, it's not Frostgrave, it's Ghost Archipelago, I think. Um, we have some um, snake men from the Ghost Archipelago range made by the same people. And they're all set in one pose. So you kind of, well not entirely in one pose, but it, it does limit what you can actually do with a figure. 
these at least have two figures which can be posed differently. So what we've got here, we have shields. Okay, uh, wooden shields. So nothing to write home about as far as shields go. Uh, they seem to be right, remarkably unarmored, which would make them fit in easy, even better with the game that we're playing. Uh, they probably rely on brute force and getting into the enemy quickly. Although the amount of bowmen um, could be useful in games. Let's have a look. We have a crossbow, always useful. And then we have a bow there and another bow, which I've just seen there. So we can fit, half the troops can have bow. The rest appear to be wearing two-handed weapons. Uh, these large spears seem more like a halberd than a spear. So that's, ah, oh, there, we've got a huge two-handed sword. Um, we've got the two-handed axe. So we're going for a lot of two-handed stuff. Then we've got a few smaller weapons like knives, things like that. Um, so yeah, I think most of the troops would be equipped with two-handed weapons and bows. Seems like a nice little collection. Let's have a look. The, I think the crossbow's minus one from your save in the old W hammer rules. Um, not sure what they do in others. Uh, the Japanese didn't use crossbows. They seemed to go straight to muskets from bows. Or arquebus muskets. It's funny because you often hear people saying dumb things like the Japanese didn't have firearms. Which is odd because they had more firearms than we had in Europe. Um, but when Westerners found Japan, they'd given up using firearms because they weren't at war. They didn't need them. They had hunting rifles, but that was about it. Um, so a lot of early visitors to Japan assumed the Japanese were not advanced in gunpowder, whereas in fact they invented sort of firing by ranks and things like that long before we did in Europe. They were fighting Napoleonic battles in the mid 1500s. And we were still fighting with rubbish weapons and, and stuff. But you know, just a side note, just wondering. Right, so what else do we have? Um, the guy holding the arrow is always good because I like to have guys firing their arrows as well as reloading. Have we got the guy holding a bow, holding an arrow? No. So possibly he would be. Could he be reaching behind his back to grab an arrow, possibly? I've got a nice little sword that he's clearly stolen from someone. From these weapons, I would assume the Nulls either make their own weapons, such as that and that and that, uh, and steal other people's weapons. It seems to fit in with uh, the way Nulls work. They're kind of scavengers, very much like Ratmen. Probably why I like Ratmen. Rat men. Sort of scavenger people who live as far away from human settlements as possible and occasionally raid, I would assume. So that pretty much fits in with um, a lot of the stories you get around Nulls. Although Nulls don't really turn up a huge amount in sort of stories that much. I'm thinking mainly AD&D, &D, so that's where I get Nulls from. But yeah, anyway, there we go. Nulls are very large rat men, take your pick. Although they've got a face of a hyena, so maybe not rats. Although, looking at the faces, you could pass a few off as rats. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's the end of the video, and I hope you vaguely enjoyed it. Um, that's the figures anyway. I'll have them painted up and based pretty soon, so, so I'll do a video on them when I get them done, and you can get an idea of what they look like all based up and everything. And if you're thinking of getting hold of them, I'd recommend you do, because I quite like these figures. So, well, I do. You might not, but, you know... Right, so thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment in the comment section. I do like reading your comments when I can get it to work. And um, click the subscribe button. That's always very nice of you to do, especially if you've made it to this length of the video. And let me know what you think in that section. So there we go. This has been Imperative Vespasian. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this entire video. And it's goodbye.